100 horsepower 12 valve Cummins build. The complete video of going from stock to not is happening right now. We're gonna take the bed off this thing, then the cab, and then the engine and transmission out, and we're gonna show you guys all the parts and pieces we are bolting on to make our 500 horsepower goal. Fuel injectors, the heart of a diesel motor, or maybe the veins, the arteries, I don't know, something. It's part of injecting fuel into our diesel. But in order to make our 500 horsepower goal, these stock injectors are not gonna cut it, plus they're pretty gross and ugly, and I don't, yeah, we, we need some new injectors. So we picked up some Chinesium injector nozzles for our factory Bosch injectors, and we are gonna be building these injectors ourselves. You can see the factory injector opens up at about 3,500 PSI, but we're gonna bump them numbers up to 4,100 PSI by shimming our spring. And we're gonna do this to all six of our injectors and get them installed back into our motor. And that should be a little enough fuel to get 500 horsepower. So we wanna run all the boost in our 12 valve Cummins and one issue of doing that is blowing a head gasket. So in order to keep that down, we are gonna be using Gator Fastener head studs on this baby because nothing bites like a Gator. So our 12 valve Cummins only has about 100,000 miles on it and there's nothing wrong with our factory head gasket and I don't really feel like replacing it. So the way we're gonna install these head studs is we're gonna take out one factory head bolt and then we're gonna install our stud along with our Amsoil assembly lube on the stud part of the threads. We're gonna lube up our washer, we're gonna lube up our nut, we're gonna install our washer, we're gonna install our nut and then we're gonna torque that stud to 45 foot pounds, 90 foot pounds, and then 125 foot pounds in the sequence you're supposed to torque the head. And this actually works really awesome because then you don't gotta take your head off. You can use your factory head gasket. If you know anything about 12 valve Cummins, you guys know if you're gonna be a head stud in, you gotta run a milled rocker pedestal. And instead of sending your factory rocker pedestal out and waiting and paying someone to mill it, Gator Faster's got you on the hookup on this beautiful, already milled rocker pedestal. We got all these beautiful parts right here from GSTP Auto Parts. We had a leaky stamp steel time cover on this 12 valve cover, in which all of them are probably leaking themselves. So we picked up this big old chunk of billet aluminum timing cover beautifulness from GSTPAutoParts.com. And this guy, we just put him right on in place of that crappy stamp steel timing cover, which was leaking like they all are from factory because they're just so thin and they warp due to heat. So if you want a permanent fix and never have to do it again, of course pick up one of these billet aluminum tappet covers from GSTB Auto Parts. We also got some other goodies from GSTB Auto Parts. Talking about heat, uh, the Cummins straight six doesn't flow coolant to the back six cylinder that well. So we got a coolant bypass kit right here. So this coolant bypass that we got from GSTP Auto Parts is actually the wrong one, which is 110% my fault because this is for a common rail like 03 and up 5.9 liter Cummins. And you know, we got that old school 12 valve Cummins, but this is actually too wide for what we got. So we're gonna chop this baby up on our bandsaw and then we're gonna TIG weld it up and she's gonna fit just like a glove. But I'll try to put a listing down below for a 12 valve one, but I will put the GSTP common rail one down below because maybe you guys got a common rail out there. One of the last pieces to go on our 12 valve Cummins making all the horse torques in the world is our intake horn, GSTP auto parts. We're gonna be running a compound turbo setup on our 12 valve Cummins and our crusty rusty manifold wasn't kicking it. Plus it don't flow well. So we're taking that guy off our cylinder head and then we're gonna be replacing it with this beautiful Steed Speed exhaust manifold. But any exhaust manifold that's gonna see some high EGTs is gonna need a good stud to hold it to the cylinder head. And of course, we're gonna use our beautiful new Gator Fastener exhaust manifold studs. 4,000 RPMs of monsterness. That is what we are gonna be spinning in our 5.9 Cummins. And in order to do that, we got this guy right here. You know, our boys Gator Fasteners hooking us up with them good upgraded connecting rod bolts right here. These babies are absolutely beefcakes. So in order to install our upgraded connecting rod bolts, we have to drop our oil pan. Then we gotta get our factory bolts out of there. Take our factory connecting rod cap out. And you should always check your bearing clearances whenever you are gonna be changing something on the connecting rod itself. So we are gonna plastic gauge our factory bearing, check it out. It turns out it is a little bit too tight. It is one and a half thousandths and that is pretty tight. So we checked it with the factory bolts just to see what it was. It was also one and a half thousandths. So that just tells us from factory, this baby was 
She was tight. She was tight and right and ready to fight. But we don't want that since we're gonna be running 60 pounds of boost on this guy and we want some oil clearance in there. So we got some cushion for the pushing of all the air. So in order to do that, we bought some different connecting rod bearings. These guys have a thousandths extra of oil clearance. So we should be right at two and a half thousandths, which we're about two thousandths checking with our plastic gauge, which is just a rough estimate, way better than what it was. And she's gonna be perfect for what we want. So then we got to greasing up our new bearings, greasing up our new connecting rod bolts. And then we threw those guys in torque the connecting rod bolts to first 10 foot pounds and then 95 foot pounds and she is ready to go reassemble the cummins put her all back together now i think we're ready to get the cab back on do some fab work so we need to stop being lazy and get our ass back to work five inches of thickness on our exhaust system for our compound turbo boost speed lab auto parts has got us on the hookup with these awesome five inch turbo back exhaust system so we're going to get this downpipe installed get our other pipes installed as well, get our clamps tight, get our hangers on, and we're gonna get this guy started up and another rip. EGT, boost gauge, those are usually gauges you install when you are modifying your turbo diesel. But one thing everyone forgets about is fuel pressure, and that's a really important thing, especially on these P-pump trucks to have good lift pump pressure to our P-pump. So we got this awesome gauge, right there from motor meter racing so this guy's pretty easy to install get it in your mount wire it in hook up the sensor and you got fuel pressure so i think one of the last things we have to do is let's go do zero 060 testing in our new truck i think on this one we're just gonna launch it So that was zero to 60 in 8.8 .8 seconds, which is not that crazy, but we also didn't launch it. So I think on this one, we are going to launch it. Who could have wrote that story? 